Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Stephanie and this is going to be like three weeks worth of wrap ups. So this is week three, four, and five wrap ups of August. So that ranges from August the 12th until the end of the month of August. So almost like the entire month of August. However, it's not because the beginning of August, I read a crap load of books. And since the end of August, I didn't read as many books because I was on vacation and they required me to be on family time. Yeah, that's why you guys haven't gotten wrap ups for the last couple weeks. If you hadn't figured it out already with my pre-filmed videos that went up that like third week, no, fourth week of August. Um, that's that's why I haven't had wrap ups. I was in a place that there was no connectivity. I li we lived in a cabin on the side of a mountain and it was crazy. It was beautiful, but it was crazy. Just out of control. No connectivity whatsoever or very limited. My cell phone was like searching, searching emergency calls only. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy for a little while. And then when I finally did get back and start to get in the groove, um, if you haven't noticed, I only have one arm right now because the other one is in a sling. And that is all from me thinking that I was young about four weeks ago at my son's end of the year swim team party doing a cannonball over rotated and I inflamed some nerves in my neck and my shoulder. So now I am on neck and shoulder rest. They don't want me moving my arm around. So I'm in a sling. It's great. It's lovely. On meds that make me tired. So that means I can't take them during the day. And yeah. So enough about that. Let's get to what books I read for the last three weeks. So you guys can find some new awesome books because yes 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 so many yeses so let's start off with book with week three and that book is going to be long shots hoops number one by by kennedy ryan this is a contemporary i give this book five stars i read it as an arc but i also listened to it on audiobook when it first came out oh my goodness this book is absolutely amazing you have iris who is a phenomenal like fan of basketball and then you have August who is a phenomenal basketball player they meet by chance at a bar the night before August has this huge game well come to find out they have a connection that is a bit of a rivalry and they both end up taking journeys in different lights and their journeys are just heartfelt and they are strong they're not together and it's just such a story that you just kind of want to go into blind so I try I'm trying not to go into what the actual journeys are but it is pivotal I will say there are trigger warnings for this story if you have issues with abuse or anything of that nature you want to tread lightly with this story but if you go into it knowing that there may possibly be some abuse there please read through it it's beautiful it is just amazing it's it's just amazing it's an amazing book it's an amazing story and it really invoked my empathy and my sympathy for people that have to go through the things that they go through and it's just it was phenomenal kennedy ryan is a phenomenal writer when it comes to real life realistic issues and I just loved every minute of that that book. Next book I read was Sexiest Couple Alive which is book number two in the Night series by M. Clark and I place this in contemporary as well. I give it four stars and I listened to it on audiobook. This book is a conclusion I guess you could possibly say for Nathan and Olivia if you saw my week two wrap up, I believe it was, I wasn't feeling Nathan and Olivia as a couple, but this story definitely, this conclusion gave me more closure and more understanding to their story. It was a little less immature than the first one was, but still had its moments and I did enjoy this one more than the last one. The 
the next book I read was Close to the Edge by Zora Clark. I read this book for Harlequin and I place it in Erotica. Uh, this is part of their Harlequin Dare series and I give this book four stars. I read it as an arc and this book follows Lily and Caleb. Lily is this nerdy sort of coder and Caleb is a fixer. Lily gets in gets herself into some I guess you could say trouble where she needs someone to fix some issues for her. So Caleb comes in and then they end up finding that they have this sexual chemistry. It's hot. It's yeah. It doesn't necessarily deal with her issues of her stalker as much as I would have liked it to throw it into sort of that suspense category but it definitely dealt with their sexual chemistry. So that's all I can say about that. The next book I read in week number three was After We Fall by Melanie Harlow. I place this in contemporary. I give it 3.5 to 4 stars. I listened to it on audiobook and this book follows Jack and Margot. Margot is this rich girl that is definitely trying to prove herself and trying to like get out of the limelight that she has with her family as it is now and trying to stand on her own and things like that. So she goes up to a farm in Michigan, which I love reading books about Michigan, so that's why it didn't get a lower score. Um, but Jack is one of the brothers on this farm, and he finds himself dealing with some traumatic issues that he has. Both him and Margo have trust issues, and they sort of work through them together. They have sexual chemistry, and I did enjoy the story. I wouldn't necessarily say it's phenomenal, but I enjoyed the angst that went along with it. On to week four. Week four started off with An Honorable Seduction by Brenda Jackson. I read this for Harlequin, uh, part of their Harlequin Desire series, and I place this in Contemporary. Uh, this is also a military story and a black author. So is the Zora Clark, or Zora Cox book that I read. She's a black author as well. Um, let's see. Gave this one 4.5 to 5 stars. I read it as an arc, and this book follows Swan and Flipper. Flipper is a Navy SEAL who goes on a mission or assignment down to the Florida Keys to check after a special person of his commanding officer. He ends up finding this woman and just immediately is taken by her. Swan is a biracial female that has ties with the Navy because her father was a Navy SEAL and she has trust issues when it comes to military just because of the way, well not with the military, with white families. That's what it was. Because her father's family disowned him for marrying her mother but they had an awesome love story and I really enjoyed how the two of them found their way to each other and dealt with the mission as well as dealing with the military and there's some trust that was broken but at the same time it was a very enjoyable story really enjoyed that one the next book I read was Hold You Close by Melanie Harlow and Corinne Michaels places in contemporary I give this book five stars I read it as an arc and this book follows London and Ian the two of them this is the quintessential brother that I loved and then he finally saw me but then he does something stupid and we become enemies so London is Ian's sister's best friend and when some tragedy, when a tragic event happens in their lives, they are sort of bound to each other to watch after her best friend's kids and his nieces and nephews. And their story is tragic. It's beautiful. It was funny in all the right moments. I wanted to like kick Ian in the head sometimes because he was being a jack butt douche but in the end you kind of swoon around him because 
he really does explain himself on why he was sort of an idiot, total guy moments and stuff like that. And I love that London was such a sort of independent woman that knew what she wanted, but wanted to fight her feelings at the same time because she knew they would be sort of bad for her. And I really just enjoyed their banter back and forth. The next book I read was Her Wickham Falls Seal by Rachel Ehlers. And I read this one for Holler Quinn as well. This is part of their special edition series. And I place this in contemporary. I give this book four stars. I read it as an arc. And this book follows Aiden and Taryn. Aiden is a single father of two twin girls or close in age girls when he moves back to his small town after he gets out of the military. So technically he isn't a SEAL anymore. He actually is a chef and is looking for a nanny or in-home teacher for his girls. Taryn comes in because her best friend is married to someone from the small town as well and sort of sets him up. And they find that they're, they have an attraction. Now, I had a bit of an issue with the pacing of this book because it sort of gives you that first couple weeks and then it sort of zooms ahead. And I was like, but what about all the stuff in between? And why did it, why it just sort of felt a little bit disconnected for me. But I did enjoy the story. I did enjoy the two characters and how they sort of went around each other. And I wanted a, maybe a little more involvement of the kids, but at the same time, I understood why they weren't involved. And then there's some other drama that is kind of thrown in there that I was like, eh, I guess you could throw that in, but why was it thrown in and then just kind of washed over? But that's okay. The next book I finished was The Truth About Lies, which is book number one in the new duet by Ali Martinez. I place this in contemporary slash mystery, and I give this one four point four stars to 4.5 stars, and I read it as an arc. This book follows Cora and Penn. Both of them have tragic and crazy mysterious lives that you just don't know what's going on. I still don't know what's going on. I'm pretty much left speechless with all of this. I do need to know, so I'm really looking forward to the next book. Their sexual chemistry is off the charts, and the thriller, mystery, dirtiness of this story is just like, ooh, ooh. It is a little slow, so you sort of have to power through to the build, but once you get there, you're like, ooh, can I know more? I, I need to know more. I need to know more. Yes. In week five, I read Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I tortured my boys for four and a half hours on our way home from our vacation, making them listen to this. So I listened to it on audiobook. And this falls under sci-fi in my book. I placed this for the Romance Roundabout for science fiction. And I also read it for genre -thon which was apocalyptic this month. I only gave it four stars because there was so much pop culture and name dropping references in this book that it just made my head spin. Just so much, so, so much. So as I said, I forced my boys to listen to it with me. And at that four and a half mark, once we got home, they were like, oh my God, the movie was so much better. I was like, yes, okay, we'll see. We'll see. Let me finish the book and then we can watch the movie because they've already watched the movie. And then I finished the book and we watched the movie. And I would have to agree with them. Actually, I was like, I was a little mad because I was like, I'm not, uh, what? I got the meaning behind the book. I enjoyed the meaning behind the book. Did I think that half of it could have been cut out? Oh, hell yes. Hell yes. And then I watched the movie and I was like, okay, I still get the meaning behind the story. But at the same time, I'm like, but they changed everything around. Why? Why? And then my husband being my husband, he made me watch the extra features. 
so the extra features are very enlightening so if my words to you is if you've watched the book or if you've watched the movie and read the book but you're not sure if you like either one of them and you're like why why watch the extra features because Steven Spielberg and Ernest Klein and all of the actors and everything like that they really give great insight into why things were changed and the reasons and all of that good stuff so definitely take a peek at those extra features and it may enlighten you and it may change your your feelings about it that's definitely why I'm keeping my rating at four stars because even though I thought it was a huge pop culture just dump dump like reference after I understand now and I understand why there were changes in the movie as well the next book I read was the feeling hour how to be a douchebag number two by Sarah Nye I place this in new adult I give it four stars I listen to it on audiobook this book follows Violet and Zeke and Zeke was a douchebag like oh my god I almost couldn't I didn't think I was gonna like him like at all at all for this story and then I want to say it was about 50% I was like okay all right I'm, I'm feeling him now but Violet is the tutor that Zeke has been looking for and Zeke is sort of I wouldn't say instructed he was reprimanded by the wrestling coach to get into the big brothers big sisters little brothers little sisters program for their college and then you start to understand what is going on with Zeke and why he's such a douchebag and then you just kind of have to love him you just have to it's such a cute and sassy book and then they have this chemistry I don't remember if there's too much sexy time in it I can't remember but I did love the banter between them so it was a very enjoyable book the next book I read was the right love right love duet number two by K.A. Lindy I place this in contemporary I give it 4.5 to five stars I listened to it on audiobook this is the conclusion to Sutton and David's love story and I loved Sutton and David before I continue to love David at the beginning of this book I wanted to slap around Sutton I was like oh my god you're being such a spoiled little brat you are being a spoiled brat right now and I didn't understand where she was coming from and as the story went along I started to sort of understand where she was coming from still didn't make any sense to me why she did some of the things that she did but overall I think I really enjoyed the story as a whole putting both books together and knowing this couple so yeah that's where I'm at with that one the next book I read was the left side of perfect book number one by Megan Quinn and I place this in contemporary I give it five stars it was an arc this is Kobe's story so Kobe is a character that we met in the blue line duet and if you've read my review for that one you know that I I really enjoyed it but I was not happy with book number two in that series I'm not happy with the ending for this book either I can't tell you very much of what's going on just know that this is Kobe's journey and Kobe's story I ended this book with heartbreak and madness and I was not happy with Megan Quinn and I didn't appreciate the, the the journey that Kobe was taking for this story and being that I know Megan Quinn is going to fulfill my happiness in the next book I allowed that to still get five stars because I just know I know that she's going to give me my happy ending. It's going to happen. I know that the right choices will be made. And yeah. So it still gets five stars, even though I was not happy with how I was left off in, for book number two. So those are all the books. Sorry it was so long. I promise, or 
I'll really, really try not to have such a long break in between, you know, doing my weekly wrap-ups and stuff like that. I, I should be back on schedule as long as it doesn't take me, like, forever to edit and stuff like that, being that I'm one-armed right now. Um, so, yeah. Have you read any of those books? Let me know down in the comments what you thought about them. If you want to know more about any of the ones that I talked about, um, are you going to go out and read any of those? Let me know if I have increased your TBR list that much more. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching, and we will see you guys later.